Welcome to the American Story. Stories about all the things that make America the country we know and love. November 10th, 2021 is the 246th birthday of the United States Marine Corps. We take the occasion to re-release a popular episode about one of the most decorated Marines in history, Lieutenant General Louis B. Chesty Puller. Every year, the Marine Corps' birthday is followed immediately by Veterans Day. On all days, we honor those who fight for American freedom, but we set aside November 11th especially for the purpose. This is Chris Flannery with the Claremont Institute, joining you in gratitude for all of our veterans. To keep the country worthy of their sacrifices is our work, and it will always need doing. I call this one, One More for Chesty. Louis Burwell Chesty Puller was a Marine's Marine. To this day, in Marine Corps boot camp, recruits are exhorted, Do one more for Chesty. Chesty Puller never quit. His picture adorns buildings throughout the Corps. His deeds and words and sea stories about him are part of Marine Corps lore. His personality and character are deeply embedded in Marine culture. What makes a Marine's Marine? All American military services rightly think of themselves as America's guardians. Proud Marines like to say they are the tip of the spear, the first to fight. The standard they want to be measured by is expressed in the motto, no better friend, no worse enemy. Chesty Puller was born in West Point, Virginia in 1898, and at full growth, he stood five feet eight inches and weighed 144 pounds. But every inch and every pound somehow became all Marine. He had a barrel chest, which probably accounts for his name, a square face and a pronounced jaw. His combat service record is astonishing. An unprecedented five Navy crosses, the Army Distinguished Service Cross, the Army Silver Star Medal, twice the Legion of Merit, the Bronze Star Medal, three Air Medals, and the Purple Heart. Chesty insisted that he did not love fighting, but if there was a fight, he wanted in on it, and he generally was. But the fighting spirit is not the only reason Chesty is revered by Marines. Bravery in combat is expected. He embodied something more. First, there was his commitment to the Corps and to his country. 37 years of service, rising from the enlisted ranks to Lieutenant General, from 1918 to 1955. A stroke in 1955 forced his retirement, and he fought as hard against that as he did against the enemy. Years later, he volunteered to resume service in Vietnam. His son, a Marine infantry officer, was grievously wounded in that war. His brother had been killed during the invasion of Guam in 1944. The legend of his and his family's commitment to the Corps was enhanced by the range of Chesty's service. America has always been a maritime nation with important interests around the globe and the need to protect the sea lines of communications to and from the Western Hemisphere. And where the U.S. Navy went, there went the Marines, from the halls of Montezuma to the shores of Tripoli. Chesty's career reflected the history of the Corps and his country during his lifetime. Big wars, small wars, nasty scraps. He remained stateside in World War I. Then he saw combat in Haiti and Nicaragua in the 1920s, served in various posts on the China Station in the 1930s, and commanded Marine units in the Guadalcanal Campaign and the assault on Peleliu, among other actions, in the Pacific in World War II. He did the same in the Korean War during the amphibious assault on Incheon, and through the seemingly endless Chinese human wave attacks in the Chosen Reservoir campaign. Legends usually somehow add a splash of color to their resume, and Chesty, like his distant cousin, Army General George Patton, was no exception. His troops reported that they really didn't need fancy communications. They could hear Chesty shouting orders up and down the line, and he was known for pithy remarks some of which he may actually have made. 
During a battalion inspection that wasn't going well, he allegedly demanded, take me to the brig. I want to see the real Marines. To a young Marine asking permission to be married, Chesty is reported to have said, son, when the Marine Corps wants you to have a wife, you will be issued one. And this is his most famous line, with several different versions, spoken at the Chosen Reservoir in Korea. We've been looking for the enemy for several days now. We finally found them. We're surrounded. That simplifies our problem. Chesty was not without his critics. They said that he sometimes fought almost for the sake of fighting, regardless of the risks and larger objectives of the battle and that he failed to understand that in war, the shortest distance between two points is not always a straight line. But if you ask Chesty's men, the vote is unanimous. As one reporter observed after talking to Chesty's troops in Peleliu, they will follow him to hell. Why? It wasn't just his courage or commitment or memorable quotations. There was something else that rounded Chesty Puller out as a Marine's Marine. His biographer, John Hoffman, himself a retired Marine, gets us closer to it. What endeared him to his fellow Marines, he writes, was his leadership. His five Navy crosses were not for individual bravery. They recognized his critical role in each instance in leading his unit to victory. His Marines knew that he would ask no more of them than he was willing to put forth himself. And that was everything he had. They knew that when they were putting their lives on the line, he would be right out front with them. He was in their eyes a lofty figure who was right at home among the lowliest of them. So when you're in a hard place, hang in there. Do one more for Chesty. He'd do two for you. Chesty Puller never quit. Thanks for being part of the American story. This is Chris Flannery with the Claremont Institute. If you'd like to learn more about these stories or how you might support them, please visit our website at www.theamericanstorypodcast.org. That's theamericanstorypodcast.org.